All right, well, hello everybody and welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And um, tonight it's just me, <laughs> no Corrie this evening, but I'm delighted to be with you. And of course, Unlocking Your Truth is a talk show. We broadcast every Tuesday from seven to eight o'clock Pacific time. And uh, we broadcast live across the Fraser Valley on 101.7 FM. And uh, we also live stream the podcast now on our Facebook group, which is Awaken Your Psychic Abilities Facebook group and, uh, and on the YouTube channel. And uh, I wanna thank those of you who have written in and made a suggestion for what we should talk about this evening. And uh, I want to encourage everyone to continue to post their suggestions on what we should talk about and also your questions. Now, uh, tonight's show, we're going to weave a theme <laughs> around two questions that we were sent in. And so the show is going to be about good and bad vibrations or high and low vibrations. And it's in response to a post by George. And he asked in a relationship, like in the workplace or in a marriage or just between friends, is there a competitive attitude on those who are relying on the survival type of energies? versus those who are spiritually more connected to something else other than the physical world? And how can people who have higher vibrations sense those who are on lower vibrations before getting into a new relationship, like a new job or business partnership? And um, Brianna also commented on that saying, great question. And she wonders if the relationships that work well together share similar vibrations and do we need a secondary question that she posted was do we need to match the vibration of the akashic records in order to access them so the show's theme tonight is vibrations and i'm going to answer the questions very specifically but also try and weave some kind of a big picture teaching into it as well and I think tonight what I'd like to do before we begin, because we've got some great uh, live presence tonight, I think it would be really, really great to do an opening meditation. And so I'm just going to talk us all through an opening meditation so that we can all clear our own vibes <laughs> um, and then have a really great show. So I want to invite everybody to sit. And of course, if you're driving, best not join in. But if you are listening in any other way, then um, I want to invite you to sit with your feet flat on the floor, your hands resting in your lap, and just take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And another deep breath in. And out. And turn within so that you can really focus on yourself and focus internally and release and let go of all distractions and all everything that's gone on in your day up until now. And I want to invite you to tune in to an energy center that exists near the base of your spine. And that energy center is your first chakra. And it contains your information about being alive in a physical body in the physical world, survival, and all your information about how to survive here actually. And I want to invite you to create a flow of energy from that energy center, which we know as your first chakra. Create a flow of energy from there to the center of the earth. So just all take a moment right now to get really grounded. 
So allowing there to be a flow of energy that goes from near the base of your spine, that flows effortlessly through the chair that you are sitting in, through the floor of the room, through the foundations of the building and all the levels and layers of the planet until it reaches the very center of the earth. And I want you to feel how being grounded pulls you into your physical body, brings you into the here and now. And it also gives you a way of releasing unwanted energies. And so I want to invite you right now to start releasing energy down your grounding. Release distractions. Release energy that isn't yours. And just focus all of your attention into the here and now. And if there's any stress or any tension that you're experiencing, you can release that down your grounding. I also want to invite you to focus your conscious awareness in the center of your head. Because this is a place where you can receive your own information about the subject matter that we're going to be talking about today, which is the cosmology of good and bad vibrations. So um, whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back into listening to uh, the show. So George has asked us about people being in different places vibrationally and, and with respect to their spiritual involvement. And, you know, he's talking about people who are in survival. And survival is how we were just talking about the first chakra. How do I survive in my physical body, in the physical world? And that basic survival energy can be to do with having enough food, having enough shelter, and all of those basic body needs. But what people tend to do is somehow that competitive energy that relates to survival gets projected into their other activities. So then they end up competing with um, other people. <laughs> and so what I want to talk about on the show tonight is about how that makes absolutely no sense amongst other things. So I'm going to take it big picture and then we'll come back and, and, and zoom in on um, some of the specifics of these questions. So first of all, every single one of us is a unique aspect of God, of divine source energy. And as a unique aspect of divine source energy, each of us has a unique energy signature. There's no single one of us that is the same as another because we're all fragments of divine source energy, all different pieces of God. And each one of us has a unique perspective and this unique energy signature. So you could call it your, the signature of your core inner being or your soul song or something like that. And that energy, which is you, is eternal, is constantly evolving, is multidimensionally expressed. And one of the places that we express our energy is planet Earth. And it is, you can think of the pl of Earth as a playground where we express our energy. It's kind of like a big game here, big schoolhouse, big place where we come to learn. And we get to interact with one another through the relationships that we have. 
whether we're relating in a work situation or whether we're relating in a personal uh, relationship situation. So each of these unique aspects interact with each other and that is how we evolve and grow by pitching one perspective of divine energy against another perspective of divine energy. And so we come and we play within time, within space, within the dualistic nature of this planet. Um, and we do these little dances with one another. And you can kind of also think of us as um, every time we look at another person, it's like looking in the mirror. And we're reflecting things back at one another. And it's also a kind of a game of forgetting. So we, so that we, we focus in that time space reality, we forget the larger part of ourselves and we become embedded in our individual roles. And in some sense, doing this dance in and out of alignment kind of is the game here. If we were absolutely in alignment, with our higher self, then our energy would be clear. Um, we would be balanced. But most of us to a greater or lesser degree are somewhat unclear and somewhat out of balance. And in actual fact, that's part of the purpose of being here because we do this dance between this polarity and another polarity. And then we, come, we learn to come back into balance. So <laughs> that's a, a way of getting around to saying, you know, our energy, our vibration is actually changing all the time as we move in and out of balance. And as we move through our experience in this world of doing different tasks throughout the day, talking to different people throughout the day going through the different personal growth cycles that we go through. Our energy is constantly shifting and changing. So on the one hand, we've got this unique signature of our being, which is a reflection of that spark of divine source energy that we are. But on the other hand, we're kind of doing a dance of frequency and changing our frequency and changing how we are expressing our energy. And one might say that our goal is to authentically express the unique aspect of divine consciousness that we are. And each one of us, in a way, well, we are, we're on our... We're on our unique journey, our unique spiritual path, and each one of us takes a different trip through the chakra system. So we all have these energy centers called chakras, and we channel our unique vibration and our unique information through those chakras. But because we are segmented in time and space, we're going through it sequentially. And so no person takes the same journey as anybody else. So one person can be focused on a third chakra growth cycle, which might have to do with competition. And another person can be focused on a completely different growth cycle, which might have to do with opening to their higher information. And so what I'm trying to get at is back to the original question of people being on a higher or lower frequency. We don't want to say, well, be, this person who's on a higher frequency is uh, better than this person who's on a lower frequency. We just want to say that they're at different stages in their path different stages in their evolvement. And, um, and so the question is, is this a compatible person for me to be interacting with and doing the dance of life with 
given my um, where my energy is, my energy set point is right now. So I, I mean, I'm going to go back and read the question again. So in a relationship like a workplace or marriage or just between friends, do some people get into competition because they're relying on their survival energy versus those who are more spiritually connected? And I mean, the short answer to that is a yes, of course. And I'm sure we've all experienced people being in competition with us. So, so, so let's reflect on that a bit. Just remembering what I just said, we're, every single one of us is a unique aspect of God. Every single one of us has a unique perspective and a valid perspective, which is, which is completely different. If we're all vibrating at our own unique frequency, it's the equivalent of an orchestra where every instrument is being played, um, playing its unique um, tones and vibrations and its unique part of the um, orchestra. So in an orchestra, the person who's playing the violin doesn't suddenly try or attempt to play the part of the bassoon or the clarinet doesn't try to play the part of a drum. It doesn't make sense. But that's a really great analogy for looking at the idea of competition because each one of us is unique. Each one of us has a unique purpose and a unique perspective. And so if, if you compete with another human, it's like being the bassoon that is trying to play the part of the flute or being the violin that is trying to play the part of the, of the piano. And if you do that, you're out of harmony and the whole um, orchestra is also out of harmony. And I've just looked at the time. <laughs> I'm going to come back to that. I have to take a break right now. Uh, listeners, you are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And we're playing around with some ideas relating to some questions that you sent in. And um, I'll be back after these few short messages. All right, so we're going to pause for some messages. And because I'm on my own, I'm also going to read and see if anyone else has posted a question. Um, let's see. I see we do have an additional question, so I'm just going to take note of that. Okay. Welcome back, listeners. You are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And we are broadcasting on 101.7 FM across the Fraser Valley, live streaming to the Awaken Your Psychic Abilities Facebook group and also on my Dr. Leslie Phillips YouTube channel. So Unlocking Your Truth is a talk show and every week we have a different topic. And I guess we might say that today's topic is about competition and also about good and bad vibrations. And I'm, I'm answering a couple of questions that were posted in the Facebook group. So before the break, we were talking about how competition between one person and another doesn't make any sense. Because, and when you're in competition with another person, it's like saying um, it's invalidating to both people, basically, because it's like saying um, whether you're and, and there's two sides to the competition coin. One side is I believe I'm better than you. And the other side is I feel so unworthy. I believe that you're better than me. And it doesn't really matter what side of that competition coin you're coming from. 
you are invalidating yourself, you are invalidating the other person, you are denying the uniqueness of each of those individuals, right? So if I think I'm better than you, then um, it's sort of like saying we're both violinists and we're both trying to play the violin and find the one who's the best violinist, according to my metaphor that I was talking about before the break. So I hope that's making sense to people. But people do, um, you, know, you know, there's competition in the animal world at a survival level. There's competition at a physical body level for food. It's sort of a, a, a part of body survival. And what we humans end up doing is we end up applying that competition, survival level um, energy to other things like our relationships, like the workplace. We even can end up competing with respect to our spiritual growth. But it is a complete misunderstanding of who we are. Anytime we compete, anyone who's in competition, whether you're feeling unworthy and or whether you're feeling like you're the best thing since sliced bread, you are out of touch of, with who you are. You're out of touch with this idea that you are a unique aspect of God and you are valid in your own right to exist as completely as you in your own energy. And so is everybody else. And also each one of us is where we are <laughs> in our, um, in our uh, spiritual path. So in answer to George's question, well, yes, that competition does arise all the time in human relations and it's inappropriate and misguided, um, but it's part of, part of us learning about who we are um, is to transcend being stuck in competition with one another. And also realizing that we're all unique aspects of God, but we're all part of God. We're all part of the oneness and together we make up the oneness. Um, and so the second part of his question was, how can people who have higher vibrations sense those who are on lower vibrations before getting into a new relationship? And here's my answer to that. You don't need to worry about that in a way, because whatever vibration you are is the vibration that you will att attract. And it's sort of simplifying it in some ways to say, well, I'm a high vibration and you're a low vibration, because we are all kind of collections of different things going on. And not all's good and not all's bad. But if you get in a relationship with someone, then there is enough of a vibrational match for you even to meet each other. Because if you were completely on a different vibration than somebody, then you would not necessarily even come into their orbit. And so but sometimes we, you know, there are people that we're working with and we say, well, I can't stand that person and I feel like I'm in a better vibration or a higher vibration than them and look at their behavior and look at the way they think and look at the way that they look at the world. But the thing to realize is if you're being triggered by somebody like that, it's, it's because there is something within you for what's going on in their vibration to be triggered. That means there's something, there's some, um, within your space, there's some, there's some mirroring going on. So either you judge them and don't like them because there's something that you are in denial about, about yourself, um, or maybe they've, Maybe they've had some form of trauma in their past and you have too, and you haven't processed your trauma. And so those who appear to be <laughs> um, people who 
we'd like to say, well, I'm not like, I'm not like that, um, are precisely the ones that we need to look at what is it within me that's being reflected back at me by that person. So I would say if you're in a relationship with somebody, then there is sufficient of a match to put you in relation to one another. But I would also say you can meet somebody and be in relationship with them. And then if one of you changes at a different rate than the other or in a different direction than the other, at some point those vibrational frequencies get so different that you can no longer be in relationship and then the relationship falls apart. Or if we're talking about um, the workplace, and this is something that I really commonly observe in people who are especially on a spiritual path is they will outgrow the organization that they're working for, or they will outgrow the field of work that they are in. And it will become increasingly unpleasant for them to be there. So let's take the example of somebody who, let's make something up, a an investment banker <laughs> or a lawyer or, you know, um, somebody working in the pharmaceutical industry. Actually, it could be anything. And they start being on a conscious spiritual path where they're starting to awaken. And being in that workplace becomes increasingly uncomfortable because the other people there are not necessarily in the same place. They're, they're still in their unconsciousness. The practices that are going on in that workplace, in that environment are lower or older vibration practices. And, and so it, it's quite common for people to, um, you know, it's like when I'm at work, I feel terrible. And then when I go home, I feel better. But every day when I go to work, I feel awful. And that's partly because of this vibrational thing that we're talking about today, that your natural vibration has now um, transcended the, uh, the consensus vibration of the workplace. So every day you go in and it's sort of like, oh, I lower my vibration to be here. And then it feels awful. All right. So I hope that that's answered George's question. I mean, are there ways that you can read someone's vibration? Yes, absolutely there are. And in developing your intuitive abilities, you can see someone's vibrational frequency and you can see how close or different that is to your own vibration or someone else's. So another answer to your question is by developing your intuition, by developing your psychic abilities, then um, you can start to read people's vibrations. Now, I'm gonna just check in with the other person who um, was wanted to talk about this theme. So I wonder if the relationships that work well together share similar vibrations. Yes, Brianna, they do. And we answered that. And then the other one was, would we need to match the vibration of the Akashic records in order to access them? That's an interesting question. <laughs> and um, in order to read energy, it's, I would say it this way. You can't read the energy. You, Let's, let's. You can only see what you are. You can only see what you already are. So you can only read something in somebody else if you already have a, are that vibration. Let's see if I can think of an example of what I mean. Um, let's see, say you could read energy and you encountered somebody who had um, a beautiful energy field, gold vibration energy field. And you said, wow, look at that amazing gold vibration that's in that person's energy. And, you know, that means that, that they're, they're really um, a relatively evolved person and they are 
um, you know, operating from a very loving perspective. Well, you couldn't see a loving perspective in another unless you already had that loving perspective within yourself. Otherwise, you just wouldn't see that about them. So I hope that answers your question, because, you know, the Akashic records, they are the record of everything that ever was, is and will be. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you wanted to match the vibration of the entire Akashic record, I mean, that's something. But if you're wanting to dip into the Akashic record to read a particular thing or read a particular person, then you will be able to read that which you've already attained along your path. All right, so I have, can see that there's another question and I don't know if this is gonna take us in another direction than our theme, but I'll read the question and we'll see. And we'll see if we can um, weave it in. So this is questions from Natasha. And she says, I have been in a, a, had a lot of trouble staying asleep lately. On the weekend, my son came to wake me up and I was already awake. In the car, I said I was awake when you came to wake me. And he said, no, you weren't. You were snoring. I was taken aback. What's happening? Oh, OK. <laughs> just, I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, and there's two more questions in there. So I'll take a look at this one and then um, we'll make sure we get to the other questions before the end of the show. Well, I'm seeing that your consciousness within your astral body. Um, I'm seeing you, you were, were kind of awake in your astral body <laughs> and your body was still sleeping. So, According to your son's reality, you were asleep and you were snoring. And according to your reality, you were awake. And you were awake in the astral body, <laughs> not in so much in the physical body. So, and I should probably explain the difference between the physical and the astral body a little bit. And let's, let's tie this into what we've been talking about, vibration. The physical body is made of dense physical matter. And it has a lower vibration than the astral body. The physical body is a vehicle for experiencing earth plane reality, the physical world. The astral body is a vehicle for experiencing um, astral plane reality, the astral world, the mental realm of thought forms and thought projections. It's related to the physical world. It's kind of where we all go when we're asleep and um, it's outside of time and space and it gives us a greater bandwidth for figuring out our reality or for, for um, playing the game of reality on planet Earth. So I'm seeing, Natasha, that you, you were lucid <laughs> and... Um, And, and, it, and it just looks like that's what's going on. You're in a growth cycle to do with your out-of-body experience. And so you're feeling like you're all awake, but that experience is happening. You're sort of hovering in between the astral and the physical and sort of dancing in between, it looks to me. So I hope, I hope that answers your question. Um, all right, folks, I think that this might be a really good time to go to a break. You are listening to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. Today's theme has been about vibration, high and low vibration, good and bad vibration. And, um, and also we talked quite a little bit about competition as well, because we talked about how people are in different vibrations or different states of consciousness and different states of awareness. So I'm looking at your truth is a talk show. We're here every Tuesday from seven to eight Pacific time. And uh, we're going to just take a short break for the radio show to play some ads. And then we will be back in a few minutes. 
And so for folks who are watching on the live stream, this gives me an opportunity to check out what other questions have been posted. So I am going to grab those questions now. So bear with me while I do that, because I'm on my own this evening. No Cory to read them to me. Um, and then we'll go back on air and we will answer them. I'm just grabbing them now. So if you do want to ask a question, I would encourage you to post it right now because I might not get the chance to look otherwise. And all right, let's just check if anyone's posted on the YouTube channel. So on the YouTube channel, you can also post, um, oh, No comments there. All right. So I'm going to go back to the show. Welcome back, listeners. You are tuning in to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. And we are here on 101.7 FM, broadcasting across the Fraser Valley and from the unceded territory of the Stolo Nation. Tonight's show is about high, low vibrations, good, bad vibrations, and the unique vibrations that each and every one of us has. And, um, you know, every single one of us has a, a unique energy, but we're also shifting our energy all the time. We're shifting our energy um, to... If you go for a run, you've got your energy in a different configuration than if you're asleep um, or if you're in an argument or if you're doing your work. And so we're constantly moving up and down the vibrational scale. When you have a different emotion, you're shifting your vibration because different emotions have um, different vibrations. Love has a very different vibration than fear. <laughs> to use the far extremes of the emotional uh, vibrational scale. All right, so I grabbed another couple of questions and we've got a question from Laurie. Could you look at the vibrational difference between the apartment I live in Esquimo versus the one I want to be on North Park Road? Yeah, so I will. And of course, everything is energy. Everything is vibration. Um, different places have different vibes. And so um, I will look at that for you. So we're looking at the place that you're at now and the place that you want to be. And the first thing that I, I want to say is... And you've, all, you've heard this before, wherever you go, there you are. So whether you are living in the, the one you live in now or the new one that you want to live in, you cannot subtract your own vibration out of the equation. And, and so I, I'm seeing that part of underlying the question is, there are some things about my life that I'm not happy with and I think moving might solve it. And yeah, if, if, you, if, you're, if you've got mold where you live and you're moving to an apartment that doesn't have mold, then um, yeah, that might solve that problem. But you know, if it's got something to do with the way that you're feeling in the environment that you're in, then you want to look at, at yourself and how you're managing your own vibration. So I'm not seeing a difference actually between the two places. And, you know, and so I'm going to look at you and your energy and the energy that you're bringing. And I would also say that you're forgetting, um, Laurie, you know how to manage the, I believe you do, because <laughs> um, I know some of the courses that you've taken, to manage the vibration of the space that you're in. Because you can, just as you can change your own vibration, 
if you're feeling sad, you can change your vibration to feel happy. Just as you can change your own vibration, you can change the vibration of your environment. So um, you can bring a higher energy through the apartment that you live in and make it feel better. Um, let me just see if there's anything else to say about this. You create your reality. Wherever you go, there you are. If there's something that you are not preferring about your reality, look at yourself, look at the vibration within yourself and shift the vibration within yourself. So you could move from the one place to the other and you might feel the same um, unless you make a change within your own energy. So I'm sort of seeing you sort of saying, well, the problem is with that, that space or that place. And if only I could choose or find the right place or space, then everything would be okay. Instead of realizing that you have the power to change the energy of the space that you're in and to change the energy within yourself. So I hope that helps. Um, I've got another question. Oh, and this is a good question, I think, unless, unless it's a comment, but it, it's um, about what we were talking about. So it says, and it's from Kelly, it says, my husband and I get into competitive communication often. Any tips on how I could communicate differently so it doesn't go in that direction? I find I often get a competitive response from people when I don't intend it at all. It's like I'm not matching my expression of myself with how I actually think and feel. Maybe it's the mirroring happening. Thank you for that question. Um, I feel like there's some, some juice in that question. So let's take a look. Okay, so I'm looking at you and I'm looking at your husband and I'm seeing that when you're getting into competition, there's some push and pull and shoving going on at the third chakra. The third chakra is the solar plexus energy center and um, it relates to energy distribution. And um, this is often the place where we're, because it, it, it's sort of how, it relates to sort of our status in the world and, um, uh, so this is, you know, often a, a third chakra growth cycle relates to competition. Anyway, let's look specifically at you. And the other thing I'm seeing is it's like, it looks like he and, and maybe both of you is focused on being heard and having their perspective heard and understood. So that it looks like you're not l listening. It looks like he's not listening. He's trying to tell you his perspective and have you hear his perspective and he's not listening to your perspective. And um, it looks like you are feeling misunderstood and it feels like he comes at you with some energy to try and make you understand. And then you're like feeling Ugh, pushed back, like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why am I getting this reaction when all I wanted was to express, you know, myself? Um, and so is it the mirroring thing that's happening? Maybe there's some projecting that's going on. I mean, it's probably both projecting and mirroring. So um, he has a stuck, um, I call them pictures, uh, concept, stuck pet concept that nobody that that nobody listens to me nobody listens to me and so that gets projected on conversations because nobody listens to me he gets reflected back at himself the experience of not being listened to um and then it looks like you've just got this perplexing i'm being misunderstood <laughs> 
and you are being misunderstood because he's projecting his stuff and then reacting to his own stuff. And then um, what would be the mirror here? Well, neither of you are feeling understood. So I'm not understood and I'm not understood. So what could you do differently? Well, I would just say, I mean, I could give you a whole bunch of stuff about what you could do energetically, but I would just say the principle would be to be non-resistant, realize it, it's his stuff, right? His stuff. And it's like the less you go into resistance, then the less it's going to stick. But also work on releasing the belief that you are always misunderstood to create the experience instead of being understood. Um, all right, so there was another part to this question. I often get a competitive response from people when I don't intend it at all. Let's take a look. Yeah, and I, I thank you for this question because I didn't really come out in what we were talking about before because you can be minding your own business and just end up with someone else's stuff being projected onto you. And again, in this case, it's it's like you can just be being your bright, beautiful self. Here I am. This is me. And um, and then come into contact with someone who feels unworthy, who feels unhappy about themselves. And it's very difficult for them to be in the presence of someone who's feeling good about themselves and being authentic, because then they are faced with a choice. The choices match the energy of the one who's being authentic and feel better about yourself or continue to feel shitty about yourself. And if you choose to continue to feel shitty about yourself, you are going to um, either crawl in a hole, <laughs> curl up and feel worse, or you're going to throw energy at the person that's um you're encountering to tr to make them feel worse and bring their vibration down so it's like here you are up on your high vibration feeling great and here they are going my life sucks oh here's someone who's um seems to be happy uh, uh so either oh yippee i'll be happy with them or oh well uh, my life sucks so um i'm gonna crawl into a hole and die or you know, I don't like that because I feel so shit and I don't want to look at myself as to why I feel shit. So I'm just going to put a ton of energy on this person and bring them down. And so I'm seeing that that's predominantly the thing that's happening with you is that you, it, so in some senses, you're being just challenged to hold your ground and be non-resistant no matter what. All right, so we've still got a few minutes left on the show. And so I want to invite people, if they do have a question, to please go ahead and post on the, um, uh, on the uh, Facebook or the YouTube. And I'm just going to check and see if there are any more. Oh, there is one more. Okay. So we have a question about, looks like about a kitten. So I'll just get that on my screen and... All right, so we've got time for one more question. I have a new kitten and a 12 year old cat who is a sweetheart. The kitten is being aggressive. Can you look at what can be done to settle down kitten? That's a cool question, isn't it? Let's see. So we've got a little bit of competition going on between the kitties maybe. I'm gonna take a look and see. And I'll let you know what I see. Are they both the same gender? Is one male and one female or are they both the same? 
let me know post it in the in the chat um i mean the older cat looks really nice stable energy um happy in her own skin <laughs> and i see that the kitten looks um the kitten's got something going on and i wonder if the kitten uh, for some reason i want to ask if the kitten is a male um cat animal um and whether the older cat is a female animal so if you're still listening the person who posted that please let me know because i'm curious about that and uh let's take a look at the at the kitten Well, it's it's interesting because it almost looks like the same answer that I answered to the previous lady, which is the the older cat seems to have a higher vibe going on, and the younger cat seems to have a more disturbed vibe going on, and um, and it's funny because an animal behaviorist would probably say something like, "Well, the young cat's trying to assert dominance and be the leader of the of." of, of of, oh, they're both boys. Okay, that's interesting. But that, that's kind of not what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm just going to give the younger one a bit of a healing. And if anything else comes up while I'm doing that, I'll let you know. Because I, I, I almost wonder if it looks like it's an energy that the younger the kitten brought with it. So whether there was something going on in where the kitten was before you got the kitten and the kitten's not realized that it's in a different environment um it's still doing the same behavior and carrying the same energy that um uh well here's a question as well if they're both boy cats has one of them been neutered oh the older one's neutered that's i just okay that's the difference <laughs> that's why the older one's all contented <laughs> and happy and the younger one's got some um i don't just think it's hormonal i think it's got some behavioral thing that it's brought with it from wherever you got it from and um just i um what can be done to settle the kitten Well, I'm doing a little bit of present timing on it and, and, and giving it a bit of a healing. You didn't say how long. You, well, I think it's just unsettled in its new environment. It's not, it just needs a bit of time to make an adjustment um, and get used to it. It looks like there's just some things that are different. Like, I don't know if you're giving it the same food or it's got a different routine, but it just looks like it's discombobulated because everything's changed and different. Um, and um, it's just, it's, it, it's, it's grumpy because it's not got, it's not familiar anymore. All right, well, I have to stop there because it's the end of the show, but I wanna thank you all for um attending live this evening and uh for posting all your questions thank you so much for that and for making the show into a really cool show so this is dr leslie you have been listening to unlocking your truth which is a talk show about metaphysics and spirituality and tonight we were talking about vibes <laughs> good and bad vibes. And we also got into talking about competition, which happens when people don't um, accept themselves as they are and accept other people as they are and compare one vibe to another. So we'll be back next week and uh, seven to eight Pacific time on 101.7 FM.